Hello. You see this shirt? It says, feel the fear, do it anyway. I got this shirt when I was traveling in New Zealand right after college. This is my college graduation present to myself to go to New Zealand and Australia. And this was after I did the rock and robes adventure. I think everyone should have a t-shirt that says this. So after college, I was still being a bit of a partier. I was a fairly innocent partier, but there was still drinking involved and late nights involved. And we had to go do this adventure early the next morning. And so we had to wake up early after not sleeping much and feeling hungover. And pretty much everyone in our group was feeling the same way, and the weather wasn't that great. Uh, it's kind of like northwest weather. And we still had to go across all these tight ropes and hold these bars. And this one was the hardest. You had to climb up this telephone pole really, really, really high. So that was the first thing if people were scared of heights. At that time, I was somewhat scared of heights, of being on this type of height, on such a small thing. And the pole does move. And then when you get up there, you'll see there's nothing there to hold on to to help you stand up on it. So the next beat is to figure out how to stand up on it. And it's moving in the wind, because it's really tall. And then from there, you have to jump and catch this trapeze bar. Of course, you are on uh, you know, a harness, so you're not just standing in the air like this guy is. We only had one guy from our group catch the trapeze who was really tall. And this was the last thing that we did, and I was so scared and, and worn out by that point that I thought, all I need to do is make it to the top. It doesn't look like it's possible to even catch the trapeze, so I just have to get up there, and I have to be willing to jump. <laughs> and I did. I got up there. I jumped. Didn't catch the trapeze. And boy, was I glad I was done. And... Uh, in New Zealand and Australia, I think almost every day there was some weird picture of me doing something weird, but I did do bungee jumping. I have another t-shirt for that off of the first bungee jumping bridge ever. I, I think I went bungee jumping twice. I did skydiving, and I did this fly-by-wire thing, and I walked on glaciers, and I did this luge, and I went on a Harley Davidson ride that you pay for with a stranger. I got off the Harley with my thighs stuck in that position because I was gripping everything for so much to hold on for my life while I was on the Harley. I was stuck in that position afterwards. Recently, I actually went to a training program where we didn't have this exercise, but we did have some of those ropes kinds of things, and I didn't feel fear. I, I was absolutely calm. I think also the fear gets mitigated when you see what the risk level is. So there was one thing I was a little scared of because it did take a bit of physical talent, and um, I did see a little bit of risk involved in, in how you could hurt yourself, but we had helmets on and things, so everyone was actually completely fine. Nothing happened to anyone. Um, <laughs> Harleys are usually fun. Yeah, when you're not scared, Don, Harleys can be fun. <laughs> I did date a guy who had a motorcycle, not a Harley, uh, but a motorcycle, a few years after that, and I did have fun uh, riding the motorcycle. I used to, like, to pretend like I was one of those movie actresses, and I would just, I had long hair, so I would take my helmet off, and i flip my hair around, and I had my boots on, anyways, I just like to make a scene. But like, here's the deal, I had a gal uh, writing to me last night, and I had already heard the phrase in the last couple days in one of the videos I listened to, feel the fear, but do it anyways, and she was asking, you know, have you always been this confident? And I said, well, don't be fooled. <laughs> Don't be fooled by my actions or my exterior. This is a really important phrase. Feel the fear, but do it anyways. And 
I told her one of the most important things that I decided that would help me is that I'm always going to move forward, even if it's a tiny step, a tiny, tiny step. But there has to be the momentum and forward progress. And that's what makes it easier when you have fear as well, is that you can break it down. It doesn't have to be these huge steps like my financial goals, you know, my first goal was just to cover my cost of living with passive income. You know, then my next goal is to pay for my book and some really good training so that I can provide more to people. You know, and the next goal can include more luxuries, but I don't like to even think about those other numbers until I've achieved the first goal and it's not limiting myself it's just making it seem easier to attain and at least I know I'm the type of person that will never stop so if you're the type of person that you're going to reach your goal and then you're just going to stop then make your goal bigger from the start but keep moving forward whether it's baby steps or not when I wanted a home and I was scared about the whole responsibility and the cost and the risk that you might put into that, I said, well, I can call a real estate agent. There's no risk involved in that. I was able to take that step. So I ask, what is that step that you can take? Fear is very natural for us humans. It tends to exist. If it never exists, then it kind of means what's happening might not even be that important to you. Uh, so you want to keep that in mind that fear is also there when this thing is very important to you. It's, it's treasured. Uh, somebody else wrote to me lately and asked me about fear of speaking. <laughs> As I'm speaking to you, it's speaking and speaking on here almost every day. And here I have these messages that I want to deliver. And so there is some fear there's some fear that some people will hate these messages and get mad at me for saying them there's some things I don't say um, but there's the fear that you know that I can get attacked there's a fear my bigger fear is that this isn't going to be valuable to you that it's not worth all the time and effort that I'm putting out and I really only want to do things that people can take advantage of um, and so what do I do? I just do it, even if I feel any fear. But with public speaking, the bigger thing is to think about the people that you're serving, to know that it's not about you. Um, and I was in another program through the same training organization that helped get over that fear of public speaking. And one of the things that I did was I sang by myself in front of an audience, and not only that, because of the way that it was done and the way that I wanted to do things and the fact that I had already lost my voice by the time I was singing, that the whole singing was completely ridiculous. And I just decided that I wasn't going to care how I came across. And in truth, if anyone does care, it's their problem not yours. Our judgments of what looks great, what looks stupid, what's valuable and what's not are simply our judgments. So in some cultures, they covet really white skin. In other cultures, they covet really dark skin. And everyone's trying to change their skin color accordingly. At one time, they painted really, really big, curvy women. And today, they make fun of Lady Gaga if she's got the tiniest bit of healthy fat on her body. <laughs> so what's what's our priority here and who are we going to listen to? And so if that's one of your fears, you can help dispel it. But a lot of our fears are an anxiety about something that might happen in the future. It's not necessarily going to happen in the future. It's not guaranteed that that will happen. So we have to remember that with fear. That was having this dream the other night and just thinking about the program that I went through where you have all these fears of these big things but then when you actually do it it's not a big deal and someone recently told me of the activity that's going to be involved in a training that I would like to do in a few months and 
I thought, okay, there's fear, there's fear, but wait a minute, everyone that's gone through this training, like hundreds, probably thousands of people have done this activity, and everyone's been fine, and nothing has happened to anyone. But yeah, I had this dream that I was recreating what all those exercises were. But the thing is, as soon as you do it, the fear dissolves. I was thinking about all the acrobatic tricks that I've done in the past with my salsa partner, and watching even people do other tricks that seem more crazy than even what I did. But I remembered that when I did those things, it does take a little bit of coordination. It does take a little bit of training and, and muscle, maybe for some people a lot. I did grow up as a gymnast and a dancer. Um, but it was actually fairly easy to do, especially once we figured out the technique. So sometimes things are a matter of just getting the right training. So you have the technique and you know what to do. I should have mentioned this to a friend of mine, but he has trouble with writing. And I was really nervous about writing the introduction to my book. And I finally globbed down a first draft of the introduction. But what really helped me was doing research online and finding a format to follow and then choosing my thoughts. So I had some training and technique involved and then I also have an editor to smooth it over so think of the things that you can do to mitigate the fears that come up but still take the action even if the fear is there she asked me how is it that I do all this even if there is fear when our desire to do something is stronger than the fear we do it when we get messages to go in a certain direction and we trust them, then we do it despite the fear that we're feeling. So Nike's phrase, just do it. Feel the fear, but do it anyway. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have a great, courageous day.